call the meeting to order at for Tuesday, July 9th, 5 p.m. Middlesex meeting. Select Board meeting. Um, Recording in progress. Well, it looks like we have some guests online. Paul, Ruben, Samantha, Shelley, MJ, and Orca. And then we have Sandy in person, and we have our, well, we have our treasurer as well. And we have Dorinda as well. Um, and we have Steve um, from FEMA. Okay, so we're going to first move uh, to approve the minutes of June 18th, 2024. Is there any discussion about the minutes? Okay, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll okay. second it. Um, Zara moved and Vic seconded. All those in favor of approving June 18th minutes say aye. 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 Okay, and then we're going to move, we're going to approve the agenda of July 9th, that's today. Oh, it's a special meeting because we didn't have it last week. Okay. Um, is there discussion or anything to add to the agenda, Sarah? Do you know? Okay, she's muted. That's okay. Oh, um, I don't. I don't think so. There is a. Um, there is a concern at 105 Lower Sunnybrook Road that a legal trail there is being blocked and. Uh, the the I have received anonymous complaints about it, and so I thought I'd bring it to the board. That's about it. Okay, so we can talk about that under other business. Yeah. Okay. Um, Alrighty. So, is there a motion to approve today's agenda? I'll approve. Today. I mean, uh, yeah, approve. Yep. Yep. And Vic will second it. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. So that was Zara moving and Vic seconding. Sarah. Okay. So we are now on to setting the 2024 town tax rate, action likely. So everyone should have gotten this piece of paper here. And um, Cheryl, is this something you want to, or Dorinda? Or? Dorinda, I've never done it before. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Start taking notes. I am. That's so what I'm next I should have recorded her. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, you'll have you're it right. on Zoom. There, um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward as far as the big jump, as you will see, is certainly in the education rate. Um, the mm -hmm. municipal rate increased uh, about seven and a half percent. I think our budget increase was like 14 percent or something, so I guess that wasn't bad. Or in, this increased seven cents, not seven percent, but. Um, and uh, it's, so basically we have to raise uh, 1,666,000 whatever to um, cover our expenses. Okay. Yes, Vic. Um, I don't, um, how, what did you just say about our budget. Did we overspend our budget? Well, and for the current year, this is setting the tax ending. rate for next year. Right. But the current budget, yes, is very much overspent, but that's because of all the um, the loans, the flood work. No, I was just wondering. I don't. I mean, I apologize. I shouldn't have asked that. Question. No, no, no. It's um, we're like double. Actually, I ran the report because that question usually does come up where we're sitting. And we are um, 2,109,000 over budget. What? Okay, so, but that's for. That includes FEMA. everything to do with the flood. Yes. Uh, but is there any comparison between the budget we projected and what the budget that we can't, I mean, can't unless, we went, unless we went through line item by line, okay. you know, um, and took out all the flood expenses, which you probably could do a number that okay. would do that. You're trying to get to the question is, is there any money left over that we could put towards yeah, I don't reducing think so. the rates? Is that what you're asking? No, I just want to know how it compared, that's all. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, it's something that if, would be, because all the FEMA stuff is in one account number. Yep. So we could probably come up with that answer, but there's technically no fund balance. The only way thing you could do is, um, and again, we've used that money right now, is um, you still have ARPA funds that you could, but that's all been used. So right. anything we, do, you know, hasn't been used as far as we've temporarily hasn't been allocated. It. It's been yeah. yeah, it hasn't been allocated. So you could allocate that, but uh, I'm a believer, and that's only puts a bandaid on the yeah, problem. Yeah, I agree. All right, thanks. Yeah, I just you answered my question. I was just yeah. Curious. So this is um, okay. I have a question. Sure. So how much more is this year over last? Year, I know. I realize we went over because of the flooding and stuff. But what, what was our what was our total number last year that we had to come up with taxes wise? Oh, tax wise. Yeah. Like this total municipal tax tax effort for this year is one million six hundred sixty-seven. Right. What was and the last that's year? so. Um, I didn't bring that. Just wondering what the increase is. How much more? Oh, it was what whatever the increase was at town meeting. I can't remember right. what that's the what budget I was. Like eleven percent or something. Eleven or fourteen. Yeah, something like that. It's higher our than budget. it was the year before. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of also depends on um, what our revenues are. If they increase for any reason, you know, if the state decides to give us more money for state-owned property or highways or anything like that, it reduces. And the grand list comes into play big time because that increased a little bit. So, you know, that offsets it as well. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? I, I just want to say that you've got a town report there. So, Sarah, if you check that out, that'll tell you what the budget was last year. And there's comparison. Oh, it's right there. Sarah, thank yeah. you. Do you want to see it? No. Okay. Um, okay, and then when do, after we approve this, when will people start to get their The tax bills will be run next week, and okay. they'll go out no later than Thursday, probably on Thursday. Okay, yes. so next yeah. Thursday, text bills will go out, and then the phone calls begin, and probably. The phone calls begin. <laughs> right. Well, I always get them on the weekend. That's on purpose. Is that, is that purpose? That's on purpose. Oh, okay. okay. Gives you a little it's time, time to cool down. down. Yeah. Um, it's, well, hopefully uh, people have been reading the news, and they understand well, that there's going to be a big thing. Increase. If you look, and that's why it's on this sheet, is, you know, 20 cents of it is um, just related to the increase for education, the town is only asking for an increase of seven and a half right. cents. Well, and it's less than some other towns are going to be seeing. That's right. I mean, some towns are going to be seeing something like a 18 to 22 percent increase. This is like a 11 percent or 10 percent, uh, 11 percent increase on the on the um, homestead. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? If it was what if it was a dollar eighty two last year and it's a twenty cent increase, yeah, yeah, eighteen cents is ten cents. I mean it's a ten percent, so it's like eleven percent. Okay, um, alrighty. Is there any further discussion? Um, hearing none. Is there a motion to approve um, setting the twenty twenty four town tax rate as it has been presented here? I'll make that motion. Okay, Vic moves. Is I'll there a second? second? Is there a second? Already, all those in favor of approving the 2024 town tax rate, say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Good job, Cheryl. Hey, wait, before, before you do that, could you please, the, since people from home who are going to be watching this, they don't they won't see these rates. So in the motion, you should say that you setting the town, non-residential town tax rate at X. Okay. Setting, with the lo setting the local agreement at X, just please do that if you don't mind. Thanks. Sure. So, if people are watching on the video, um, yeah. the 2024 homestead tax rate is two dollars and point zero two six eight cents, which is an increase of point two zero three nine over the previous year. 
meaning cents, 20 cents increase. 2024 non-residential tax rate is 1.9395, so about $1.94. Uh, previous years was $1.70, and that's 23, about 24 cent increase. Municipal tax rate for 2024 is 69 cents, well, 0.6972, um, which is a seven and a half cent increase over the previous year, which was 0.6215 cents. The local agreement tax is is for 2024 is 0.0026 and last year it was 0.0024 and the 2024 total town tax rate which is the municipal plus the local is 0.6998 versus last year's 0.6239 which is an increase of 0.0759 cents so in total, the total residential tax rate, which includes the homestead and the municipality, is 2.7266 dollars, which is a almost 28 cent increase over the previous year of 2.44. What that percentage is overall is Point two seven nine eight. I think divided by. Do I do that divided by um, point two four four? I mean two point four four. It looks like it is um, like an eleven percent, eleven and a half percent increase overall. Yeah. Does that makes sense. Um, okay. Alrighty. So there we have it. Passed. Now, Good job. thank you. Thanks for taking notes. And Sarah, just for your information, um, uh, Richard Cowles has entered the room, but he's in the back, so you don't see him on the video. Okay. Hi, Mr. Cowles. Um, 525, Highway Department update. Discussion of road conditions and FEMA work via DIRT tech update action possible and that will be from um, Eric and Steve and then Zara will give us some town road subcommittee updates if there are any and this is all action unlikely and then we will move to reviewing Mr. Cowell's um, correspondence with me and then subsequent visits with Eric and Steve on his property and action possible um, so let's start with the highway department update Eric yep. if you please <clears throat> um, we have the Kenworth back with a new engine um, and our new excavator has arrived um, Yay! Freightliner is still down uh, all, all the others are still running um, let's see we brought gravel from the town pit to Nelly Chase um, we worked on Shady Rill uh, there were some spots where we had some heavy rain on the 23rd that we had to fill in um, after that rain, we had to put some uh, gravel on Notch Road as well. Um, graded uh, Nelly Chase, Zedon, Notch Road, Center Road, and part of Brook Road. Uh, we hauled gravel to the shop for inventory, and today we were clearing out culverts, cleared out a bunch of wood debris in front of uh, Lower Sunnybrook Road's culverts and getting in preparation for the storm coming up. Did you happen to attend that meeting today? It was, I just got the note, this it was 4 to 4.30 from the emergency management. I didn't get a chance to see it, except, I mean, I just know that they sent us telling us to look through our culverts, which yep. is what you did. Yep. And Sarah, did you send that out to the Front Porch Forum for people to look at their driveway culverts? Uh, front Porch Forum just uh, was published, and yes, it is there. Perfect, thanks for doing that. Um, so everyone go home and check your culverts and make sure that they are clear for this big rain. Um, okay, and anything else not dirt tech related? Okay. Um, Do you want us to ask questions? Yeah, you can ask some questions, yep. 
Um, when you said you were over on Shady Reels, where I saw you over there the other day, and you were filling in where the you're talking about where the blacktop and the water runs yep. off the blacktop and makes yep. up the edges, and also yep. that um, that's uh, very evident, as you well know, and nothing I'm telling you on the center road up here. Yep. Anywhere about. Did we ever give any thought, or could we give some thought that you know for you to be out there with a rake and a and a you know dumping it with a of possibly hiring a shoulder machine? Well, we were we were using our truck as a so shoulder machine. As far as the material was coming out, you just got to spread it What's out. What's a shoulder a machine? Uh, it's basically a machine that puts material on the shoulder that you can grade off and oh. smooth out. Is that, so you were putting that like you opened the gate in the back of the truck? No, nope. the, the bed chain. Well, you're using the, it's the sander. Yeah, and then we have a chute that comes off on the side. Okay, but you still have to. You just still got to smooth it out a little bit. Right. Yeah, it just comes out in a pile. All right. Okay, if you're happy, you're happy. I just have to ask, um, why did you grade Colbert Hill Road after they flattened it, Dirt Tech flattened it, and made it like a super highway, and then it just got graded, and it didn't seem to be graded? Was it just on your schedule? I think, yeah, I think Jay did the whole road instead of just part of it. What did he do? Whoa. Well, Dirt Tech had done such a nice job flattening it. It was like pavement. Yeah. <laughs> and there were no washboards or anything like that. And then it just got graded. And then that, and then it rained and then it... Well, it's about to rain, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm just wondering why it got graded. If, and it just could be that whatever. They didn't know we're thinking about it, but okay. Um, any questions for Eric about road stuff. Thank you, Vic, for taking care of some things in your absence when the trees mm -hmm. fell down after the storm. Mm -hmm. You got in touch with Rich, who, or Rick, who was able to work on that. So thank you for doing that. Yes, sir. Just quickly, the Wood Road, the letter that we got sent, taking care of that. Um, that was addressed before the letter was sent out. Okay. So was that a Dirt Tech boo-boo or? Well, not a boo-boo, but uh, we're going to relocate the, the culverts to a different angle. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, FEMA and Dirt Tech, how's that going, Steve? Very well. Okay. So Dirt Tech, uh, the completed roads, they've completed Macy. Uh, Wood Road, with the exception, we do have to go back and realign one culvert uh, and add about 10 feet to that. Uh, it was put in the way it was laid out, but it should have gone uphill to realign the culvert, but it wasn't, so we do have to go back and do that because it created a little bit of a wash on the road because the area by the uh, inlet of the culvert just filled right up, so it washed it out a little bit right there. So that needs to be done. So Government Hill is complete, Culver Hill, Bulldog Road, uh, Zedon should be completed end of the week, first of next week. Um, this had to be completed by the 18th of July because of the culvert that was installed on Zedon was a temporary culvert. So temporary work has to be completed within one year. Mm. You can file for an extension, which is a whole bunch of work. So seeing as how that was, there is one other road with temporary, and that is Lower Sunnybrook. But because of the hydraulic study there, um, FEMA is going to go out there and do an assessment also of that this coming Thursday, actually. Yep. So we don't have to worry about that one with one year All right. time frame. Um, but, you, but you said Zidane will be done. Anyway, Zidane will be done. Yes. Okay, great. Yep. Thanks for keeping track of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to keep track of. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, East Hill. Um, Mostly ditching and stone lining. They do have one more uh, four-foot culvert to put in. I thought there was two, but I didn't go up there. And Eric was filled me in. They did do one of them, so they have one more to do, a four-footer. And also the new squash culvert, and that is because of the hydraulic study. 
Uh, the squash cover has been ordered. It should be here about mid-August. Is that that big block? Pardon? The big block thing. Okay. I've just never heard it be called squash. The big rock is. Yeah, yes. That's what it is. Oh, no, but what is a squash culvert? A squash culvert is just a big round culvert that they put in the machine and squash it so that oh. you don't have the height, but you got more width. It's elliptical instead of round. Yes. Gotcha. Does that also East Hill? Sorry. Pardon? Is that also going on East Hill mid-August when that's, it comes in? That's right. When that comes in, that'll, that'll go in. Um, and then the top gravel needs to be applied, so. Um, okay. Portal Road, uh, ditching and stone lining is complete. Uh, there's a little top gravel to be applied. And also on Portal Road is a new box culvert because of box. the hydraulic study. And that has been ordered and the schedule right now for delivery is October 1. So they will probably be a, a totally complete on portal. Portal, yeah. Um, other than that box culvert, which can be done totally separate. There's no top gravel going in where that is anyway. Um, the work has been completed to put back the temporary staging area to the way it was at the farm. That has been that. completed and sent to Kevin. And the only other one I got is uh, All Seasons Excavation. Uh, they were doing work uh, from a contract and uh, a change order from that we did last year uh, on Davy Road in Upper Sunnybrook. Uh, they've got just a little bit of uh, ditch lining to do and top gravel on both of those roads, which is not a lot not the whole road. Um, they are currently not on site. Um, I will be getting their schedule when they'll be back. But. So that hasn't been done yet, the Davy Road and Upper Sunnybrook? Pardon me? That hasn't been done yet, the that Davy has Road not and Upper Sunnybrook. Okay. So that's all. It's uh, about $25,000 worth of work okay. left to, com to complete on that road. Okay. And that's all I have. Alrighty. Yes. Victor. On uh, Davy Road, um, yep. you have some stakes there, and it's where the ledge is into the ditch. It'd be on the right-hand side as you're headed towards the end of the road. Mm -hmm. Is that is that all seasons work, or is that is that going to be done? Is the you got a couple of stakes there, yeah. quite a ways apart, and you can see where the ledge is. Yeah, the ledge isn't pushing out into the road, but it's it's. It's high. It's, it's high. Yeah. Um, no, I just wondered if... Well, we originally uh, were going to have them do that, but they only have a small hammer now, mm -hmm. and I I don't want them doing that with a small hammer. I mean, that's uh, Eric's call too, but mm -hmm. I mean, they'd be hammered for a long time. At the, so it's just not cost effective. So we're not so, going to do it? So we're not going to do that little bit of ledge hammering yeah. there. We did do a lot of ledge hammering on uh, Upper Sunny Grove. Uh, a lot of ledge hammering, which has been real good. It's been able to, it's after you go up over the top of the hill and you start down that whole side right there, um, a lot of it we I thought was dirt, I think uh, we thought it was some of it was dirt and but it was all lead and we've removed all of that so that the ditch line has moved back where it should be and the road was it, water just kept coming out into the road and eating the road up so that should not be a problem anymore the other question I had was uh, and I talked with Eric and he explained it a little bit and what you're, you're, you're trying to do is uh, but uh, there's a lot of uh, conversation or calls and stuff about uh, when the road is closed and when it isn't closed. And I mean, as you know, I asked you one day, and right, it's yeah. okay. And, yeah. But um, is there some way that, like, some people on Front Porch Forum have asked, 
Is there any way we can get a little better word out what's going to be closed? Or? And this, it doesn't have to be closed unless they're crossing the road, is that right? Right. It's just a culvert crossing. So, I mean, yep. if they're doing their ditching, you may have to stop and wait and yep. get out of the way. Yep. But it's a culvert crossing. So, so I as mean, in uh, East Hill, there's that one more. Until the squash culvert, then that road will be closed for about a week. Yep. And we'll have to make sure we get that word out. You know where it is too. I mean, I would say last time Steve called me about Zedon Road, and I put it in front porch, porch forum. I'm happy to do more of that, as that's part of our committee work is reaching out to members. So uh, whether it's I'm talking to Steve or Eric or Dirt Tech, if you want me to do more of those postings, I'm happy to do them. I know that we also have signs, but people mm -hmm. like the communication. Yeah. Is there any value to somehow having? I thought we did something on the website as well. Or not really, not really a list to like update. From Porch Farms, probably the best. You know what else is a good one too? Would be the um, if you're on the Facebook page I do for Middlesex. Middlesex families. Then and people I also see do that this right away. And then I also do an app called Next Door in McCullough Hill. Okay. So, so we just need to do those more often. So if you yeah, if you yeah. you want to connect with me more often, yep, you I just can give me a call and I'll type I'll it right that. up. I'll, that's great. I'll keep yeah. right in touch with you where they are, so Excellent. that we know. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. Thank, Thank you, Steve. Okay, so are there any more questions for Steve about the dirt tech and FEMA work? I do have a question for Dorinda and Cheryl. Just that number that you used, um, how we were, uh, 2 million over budget, 2,109,000 over yeah, budget. Like that. Was yeah. that, and that was, Last year we were over budget. That's as of June 30th. But oh, that's as of this June 30th. Mm -hmm. Well, which is the end of our fiscal year. Because of right. April. So did we really spend two million on FEMA already, well, or does that include like the loan? That includes the loan. Uh, well, all of our expenses were that because we had to do the loan to pay the bills. So yes. we spent everything we had in the fund balance. We spent. Everything. Wait, but it was only a million that we. Paid out for FEMA? Like, we borrowed a million. Yeah, we borrowed a million. A million and a half. Yeah. And then the rest came from ARPA fund yeah. balance and whatever. I guess operating my question is how much did we pay the FEMA people, the, the FEMA um, contractors last year? That was 1.2 somewhere in there last year. Right, it wasn't two million that we paid to contractors yet, as as of no, as of last. Year. So one point two or one point three, somewhere right there. Right, this part here probably includes that that last third tech bill that we sent out to, because that would have been paid. In that would have been paid in this year. fiscal in yeah, the last yeah. fiscal yeah. year. Okay, but estimate wise, for the cost of repairs over last year and into this year. We're talking two million, not three million, right? You mean it's for an everything estimate. that's yeah, going to be everything done? Everything that's gonna be done. Or is it three million? No, you're talking two million or over two million to dirt tech and so you got the Okay, so it is two. three million. You're gonna have three million three It is three million, two, three, okay. Whatever it is there. Yeah. So we actually for flood twenty twenty three, if I'm reading this right, okay. we spent one point nine four nine in paid. One point nine four nine. Yeah. In bills. In bills. To everybody. Well, that doesn't include those dirt tech bills, right? Right. No. This is this right here is just for just the actual flood flood work. Yeah. Flood flood. One point nine. Yeah. My board said, so really, we're talking four million then. So it would be four million. Yeah. Oh my God, why did I think it was going to be two? Well, no. <laughs> no, I said, why didn't I think it was going to be two? Because we took out a three million dollar Because we took out a three million dollar loan. But, but remember, that was because, well, that was for that year. You're right. Yeah. Right. I must be in denial. Yeah. <laughs> this is just for the highway because everything else has been broken out. So you see the 1.9 right there? That's where the highway flood. flood. Okay, flood. yeah. Mm -hmm. This right here is the current work that has been paid, and this is like broke. This is what we've got into Shady Real okay, so far. Gotcha. This in the Macy Road, and this in the Wood Road, and that's just what we've paid yeah. so far. Okay, yeah. We do have another bill down on the desk in the okay. desk right now that um, mm -hmm. is waiting to be approved. But 
But then, like you can see here, like we had 460 for the cemetery. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. And you know, the fire, yeah, the fire department ones. had some little things, and then of course there's okay, yeah. um, the FEMA wages as well, and that's just not on this page. So. Yeah. Okay. But this stuff isn't related to FEMA over here, no. is it? No, no, just that's that small line. Just, yeah, yeah, so yeah, those are just normal. We just, when, when the flood work. happened, we wanted to be able to track that. Yes, and, thank you for doing and, that. In like, little pieces, yeah, so it's yeah, easier yeah. to break it up. Okay, gotcha. Where's the breakout, though, of like Steve's? That's um, in general government. That's in and general not in government. The highway. Yeah. And not in the highway. Yeah. Okay, so that should be somewhere captured in the cost of the flood. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know how we would do it, but. Right. No, it's a whole different line item. It's, it's a, a whole different, different line, line item. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, alrighty. Thanks. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of money, you guys. Yeah. Okay. And um, so this right. storm coming up. Um, let me just back up to talk about the storm that's coming up tonight. If we get the rain that there's like two forecasts. One is horrible, and one is not horrible. Um, so if we get the horrible one, this will be a very good indicator of how the roads are, are faring, right? Either way, it's going to be. What? Either way? Either way, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be a good indicator. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's supposed to start raining uh, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, all day, pretty much. Yeah. And then the heaviest is from like 11 a.m. to oh, God. Uh, 2 a.m. in the morning, or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. I have a question related to that just because I'm not sure how quickly, but I have a real concern about the brook at the bottom of McCullough Hill. Is there a concern if we do get this six inches of rain? Mm -hmm. Because of, I mean, those rocks, I, there's hardly no room left in that. Um, the, and besides that, there's a huge tree under there. It's like, I think, if we get that six inches, I think it's going to be over the bridge. Could very well be. It could be because there's more debris upstream. And there's more debris upstream. Oh my God. Um, it's terrible. So, so then my question is, did we do the RFQ? Do we have somebody that's going to dig that out before October 1st? Did the uh, permit get changed? The permit has not gotten changed yet. Is he holding us up, this permit guy, that we can't, I mean, we can't no. do the work without the permit? Or All right, so how do we do the work? we got to find someone to do it. All right. So RFQ, have we done that yet? No. All right, so we need to do it because it's, we need to have somebody fix it before October, is it 1st or 31st? I think it's the 4th or so. So we need to find somebody yeah. before the <laughs> tonight. We need to find someone tonight. That would be great, but uh, the, the technical deadline is October 1st. Okay, to have the work done? Yeah. Okay, so. I think it's actually October 10th, but. But we need to. Hi, Peter. Out somebody to do the work. So whose job is that? To do an RFQ? Yeah. Uh, well, guess me. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just... Don't look at this. be me. Okay, but that, is this a part of the hazard mitigation? No, that's, a, that's a grant thing. Yeah. So a request for quote, right? That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, your husband just did a great one for the website. Uh, have you ever done one before? Have you ever done one before? Have you ever done one before? I've done tons. Okay, somebody needs to help. Sarah's done tons. Sarah's done tons. I've done plenty of RFPs, requests for proposals. You know, I think we've got some sitting out there right now, actually. Um, the question is, I just need the details. I just need to know how much, timeline, all those little details, and I can put something out. Excellent. Well, so, I need it to be done yesterday, so... I have all that information. That Eric yet. has all the information. So you'll send it to Sarah, and she'll take care of it. Thank you for volunteering, Sarah. I, but it's just a request for proposal. I'm, I'm don't, I just, I can't, I can't, I don't know what the details are. I just need someone to give me the details. Like, like I will give hey, you the details. Hey, you under our bridge? It doesn't don't cost too much. Call Sarah, <laughs> yeah. Eric is going to send you the details. Okay. And thank you. And thank you. Oh God, this makes me nervous. Okay, um, 
Road, road committee up, update. Any updates? Did you guys meet? Yeah, we uh, we met. We have decided to go to once a month because Great. everything's going swimmingly. We're filling out um, a total of thirty six until tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, until tomorrow. So far, we have thirty six hazard mitigation grants totaling three and a half million dollars. Okay, great. Of um, proposed just mud spot fixes that we know as a town needs to be done, correlated with the. Um, uh, what Hilton uh, put together, um, what the town people have said also needs to be done. So I'll have a better, um, rich, like Richard did half of the list, Paul did half of the list, Eric did a lot of the list. So I have estimates from everybody and I do have a member who's putting together a master list of all the spots, the coordinates, and how much we're asking for. That's great. That I'll be able to give to you when that's done. Are there any buyouts in it? No, uh, no, there aren't. You had mentioned a buyout with I think Sarah and I. Yeah. What was that? So, yeah. Yeah, this is the one remaining buyout we've got going. It's Victoria Hallahan. She's just been hard to get hold of. She's meeting me on at the town offices on Monday, and then I plan to put it on the agenda for the 16th if you guys decide to meet on the 16th, and you can approve it. I don't see there's any reason to fold it into a grant. I've talked to the state. It's the same form. It'll be the same pre-flood. You don't have to include it. All right. Okay. I thought it had to be included also in this hazard mitigation. Uh, I don't. Know. It just has to be done by August sixteenth. Yeah. Is that right, sir? My understanding is it has to be done by August 16th. She is, Victoria is on everybody's radar. They, the board, we just need to get the application done and the board to approve it. And I'll send it off to FEMA on the 17th or whatever. Okay. But it doesn't have to be included in Zara's hazard mitigation application. No. It's already done with yours. And it's a pre-application right. that I'm doing. So it takes no time. And Sarah could certainly fill out the one for this okay. person if yeah. she wants. It's the same, same form that we've okay. been using all along. All right. OK, so any questions for uh, Zara? I almost called you Zena. I'm so that's happened. <laughs> I've heard worse. <laughs> Zena. Um, OK, yes? Peter. Tax rate is proposed. Yes, we did. Yep. Call down to your checkbooks. Yep. Um, okay, so now we're going to move on to reviewing the correspondence from Richard Cowles, who is here. Welcome, Mr. Cowles. Um, regarding a town culvert's effect on his property action possible. So uh, Mr. Cowles reached out to me via email, and he said he's also spoken in the past with, um, I believe, Vic, he said, and maybe a previous road commissioner. Is that not commissioner, but... Road. Yeah, it's been a... 10 or 15 year kind of thing. Okay, so it's been an ongoing thing where the water um, that is on a cross culvert, which crosses over the main road, drains onto his property, and um, it has caused the, was the, the latest um, rainfall that we had, maybe that was a big one that put a lot of silt into his pond, and the fish died. Is that correct? Was it's, it a dead fish? It's filling my pond full of silt, okay. which is uh, putting dirt into a pond, which eventually you will fill it. Okay, so, yes. okay, so the culvert is, and then um, my understanding as well is this, that culvert was damaged during the July 10th flooding, and it's part of Dirt Tech's project and that they have put in a larger culvert in that same location um, and that culvert to our knowledge has been there for around 20 years or so in that same location we don't have a record of our latest um, when that culvert was put in but it's been there for as long as Eric recalls Vic do you have any memories or Steve I do not okay I Okay. Gary so then I received, I, I forwarded the emails to um, Eric and asked him if he would be able to visit, which he did with Steve. And so if you guys could give us an update on what happened, when that was and when that happened. That was uh, yesterday. Okay. Um, we went over why the culvert is there. Um, Can you speak a little louder because Peter's, I know, might have trouble. Can you hear me, Peter? 
Yes, I can. Thank you. Um, we, we looked at it yesterday. Um, it's our standing that the culvert needs to stay there to, to reduce the amount of volume going down the road. I, I feel that it's too long of a stretch of between cross culverts to allow that. I don't think the ditch line will hold it. Um, Richard does not like that, in, which I understand, um, but we need to come to a resolution to fix this. Can you remind me the road? East Hill. East Hill Road. Okay, and is it as you're going up East Hill Road, or where where is it on East Hill Road? Uh, no. It'd be going. Over to the top. <laughs> okay, so I was to the top from to like top. Um, if you're coming from Peter's is house. Is it five? Right? On, on, on the Montpelier five. side. Or on the Montpelier what, side. What, okay. Is it five? Oh, I know that 350. pond. Three fifty. Is it on the left? It would be on the left as you're below the pond. Below the pond. What do you mean below the pond? So Eric, did you say it's 350? Richard, what's your address at that? What's your address? So it's that pond on the left and your house is above. Is that right? Oh, that's that's right. My neighbor has a pond up above as well. Oh, okay. I don't know if I know your pond. There's a little pond, this pond, that's just below that one you can see with the house on the hill. Okay. It's just below that. It's a yellow house on the left. Okay. So, um, but the culvert has to be above that. Right, because it's going to be draining downhill into well, the pond. It's almost in line with it. It's almost in line with it. Okay, so it's causing, and this this problem has it always been going into the pond, Mr. Kells? No. Or is it because now we have a bigger culvert or it's raining more? There's a lot of factors that 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 has happened over the years, um, but uh, I. The, the culvert, as far as it failed up above, and it created more water heading down the hill, um, my suggestion would be to, um, I, I believe it, if a, a ditch was, was constructed properly, and like we are hiring Dirt Tech to do, um, and built well, um, and as I measured today, we talked, um, it's only another 200 feet. Um, and it's actually a dry ditch currently, right now. Um, so we would be feeding another 200 feet. What does dry ditch mean? Meaning there's no water flowing through it as of today. Oh. Only and when it rains. Only, only when it rains. rains. Okay, so it's zero normal. water. Zero okay. water. And I believe that um, constructed ditch properly would be able to head down the hill with a with a ditch, with the rock, with the stone, and as well as I believe that there's also fail safes all the way down that road on that side because every driveway has a culvert, and there is a drive a culvert crossing just below my property. Um, I believe it's a better chance of water making it down a proper adequate ditch than dumping 24 inches now culvert size culvert onto my property to forever create more erosion and silt that will never end and it, it just is going to keep going yeah did you mention something about a river too I, I made an example of as when it rains and um, it comes off the hillside uh -huh. and the, there's a culvert crossing above my property that had failed and been failed all winter. Yeah. It's been failed since July up until, actually I think they went up there with a backhoe there maybe a month ago or so. Um, so over the past year, yes, I've lost four feet cuts of, of my, 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 basically my my property and it's all headed into the pond it's all headed into I the see. river and it's all headed down the river and then it keeps on going into everybody else's backyard so it's actually the, the it's actually the earth of your property that is being the earth of my property is, is, being is, moved. is eroding okay, gotcha. and gotcha. and okay. it'll never stop and now we put a 24 inch culvert mm -hmm. um and i've suggested and i've offered like i said um dave my neighbor used to have a culvert in his driveway many 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 years ago just about the time they put that culvert in 
um, that crosses above my property, his collar failed. There was, they said, well, we'll give it a try. And well, it needs a culvert. And also the road is- uh, His driveway doesn't have a culvert. His culvert doesn't have, a, his driveway doesn't have a culvert, which is five feet from the culvert that crosses onto my property. So we're really not looking at a lot of change. Now, again, I go back to the proper built ditch, the proper built, it could handle the water. So, um, I would like to hear, Eric, from you, what your thoughts are, and Vic, because you're knowledgeable. And heck, I'd listen to you too, Steve. <laughs> because you're, to you're knowledgeable as well about what he's saying, because I'll defer to the experts. So, well, who think, wants to talk? I think about? Eric's got it. It, it. The next cross pipe up is what you said is 1,000 feet. Down. So it's about a thousand feet from his this pipe that we have just replaced to the next cross culvert. Right, two hundred fifty feet. And we'd be adding two hundred feet we'd to that. Adding feet. Yeah, be adding two hundred feet I to the thousand feet that's already there. Is that that's a long ways? But the ditch is dry now. So I, most of our you, ditches sorry, are dry you now. Just tell me the numbers. You said thousand feet away, or just by moving it, is two fifty. I need you guys to clarify okay. that. Okay, so Sarah, the, the the culvert in question, yeah, from that location downstream to the next culvert that crosses the road is about a thousand feet. Okay. If we were to remove that culvert that's in question, it would add mm -hmm. just over two hundred feet more to that thousand feet of ditch line. Does yeah, that make sense? Down, yeah. and, and your point though, if I may, yes. is that 1,200 feet is too darn far on that, on that incline, not to, not, not, to have a culvert. not to have a cross culvert to get rid of the water. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm yeah. saying. Okay. Yes, Zara. Uh, am I hearing, Richard, that you want to put in a culvert in your neighbor's driveway, which is now completely blocking the flow of water for, on your own, that you're willing to do that because you think that will help mitigate the problem? Well, so in order to, in order, if I put a culvert in here, which I did offer for free, and I have an excavator, I could probably do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I, it, what they're saying is when I put that culvert in, now we now we are going to allow 200 feet of water, uh, 200 feet more of ditch mm -hmm. added to, I didn't measure the other end, he's saying 1,000 feet. So yes, we will have 1,200 feet to the next culvert that crosses. And so that, I guess we look at volume of water. We have to do a study of water. I, I mean. I believe a well-built ditch will take every bit of that water and and keep it from a never forever ending eroding at my property. Okay, can I just ask a question and then I so that I can visualize Probably this? The same question. As I'm going up as I'm going up East Hill Road mm -hmm. and your house and your pond are on the left, right? And I'm coming from Mount Pillar, so I'm going up. Does that road drop off? Is that why there's no ditch there? Or is there a ditch there and you're saying it's a dry ditch? I guess I'm a little confused about where, why the water isn't staying in a ditch. Like how is it going out of this cross culvert and just pouring into your property? There's no ditch there now? Because uh -oh. so there's not always a ditch good. everywhere, right? You go up the road, yes, there's, there's a ditch. That, that was dug and it's been dug, a ditch has been on the right side for 40 years, I don't know, you know. Um, and up above, just at, just uh, in, just uh, my neighbor's property on the right side, the opposite side, where all the water is okay. across the road. There, all this water across the road, and this culvert's coming down off the hill, right, right above the hill, right at the flat part, in my neighbor's driveway. So it crosses here, 20, 10 feet from my neighbor, from that culvert is my neighbor's driveway. And if there was a culvert on that side, it would allow the water to continue down the hill. I see. Mm -hmm. 
and then it would hit the next culvert. I see. So that you culvert you think would keep it in the ditch, keep, keep the water in the, in the ditch. ditch. And you guys don't agree with that, or do you? <laughs> the water is in the ditch now. Okay. When the ditch, the ditch is working when it rains, as yeah. most of our ditches are dry unless there's a water yeah. source or most of their ditches are dry. So this is a long ways to put, to allow that water in one ditch. It, on I a heavy see. rain, I don't think it would work even if the ditch is built right, which it will be. What my suggestion was, that culvert was put in just recently. The culvert people put in the culvert, but they didn't do any work around the inlet or outlet. When we looked at the project up there yesterday, um, you could clearly see that a lot of the a lot of the dirt and gravel that was in the ditch on the outlet side of the culvert was from the road, not from the culvert. Was from the road. It was just quite a bit of dirt there. So there was a a little bit of a problem with the road right there, where the the side of the road needs to go down to allow the water to go off the road before it even gets there. So my point was, if, if those things are fixed and the ditches have their rock in them, that's going to slow the velocity of the water mm -hmm. and it also stops a lot of that turbidity, that, and you do that on the outlet side also, mm -hmm. the way it should be done, he's not going to have that turbid water He's talking about from there to his pond is a thousand feet, roughly. Close. And it's a natural swale gully. Uh, excuse me, it's not a waterway. It was a dry location before it's, this it's, culvert was it, ever installed. Dry location, period. It's, this is like it's, dumping the It's not dry when it rains. It's, it's, yeah, it's, there was a few yeah. pieces of trees. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Yeah, uh, Mr. Kaus, please raise your hand and address anything you want to have to say to the chair, who's me. Um, you as well. Uh, I do want to address Paul Sermonera, our former road foreman, who may have some knowledge of this. Hey, I know the Kelbert in question. Um, I, I would be of the same opinion of, of Steve. Eric and Vic, adding that much. Number one, we are proposing adding a driveway culvert to a driveway that doesn't currently have one, which now you're going to have to talk to that neighbor about altering that. Secondly, I don't know how long this culvert's been there. I know in my tenor, I know in Gary's tenor, we don't know how much longer than that. So that's all of, almost 25 years, at least that in our records we've not changed the water, the town's not changed the water, we've simply upgraded the culvert, and if erosion is happening outside of the town's right of way, it's not necessarily the town's responsibility to deal with that if we've not altered anything, at least in any kind of recent future, to change any kind of the water dynamics there. The town is not obligated to deal with erosion on private property. That culvert's been there for 30 years. I, we don't know that. Richard might know. Um, but if it's if it's 25 years and now we're getting a complaint about erosion, that's it seems like that a little late on on. He said he's he's brought this up for many this for many years. years for 15 years. Now, yes, you've raised your hand, Mr. Cows. Please speak. Um, yes. No, I, I'm trying to make it simple. Dave had the neighbor had a culvert. Um, it isn't there now. Um, water was going down the hill. Um, yeah, quite a few years ago. That culvert's been gone for a while. Um, there was the, let's see, yeah, about uh, the last, uh, I don't know the foreman, but uh, one day I showed up and there's a culvert across my property and there's a catch basin up above the property, above my property, which, which the town paid to put a catch basin on someone's property, which I don't understand. Um, and now I got water on my property and it was a dry period. I, it's, it's a dry piece of land. Now, I'm just saying, so it's okay for the town to decide where a culvert, they want to put a culvert and they can put it across anybody's property anywhere at any time. 
Wait, can you can you clarify what you mean by putting a culvert across your property? What what, what does that mean? So, okay. is it okay for a town to put a culvert and exit water onto oh. someone's personal property without asking permission, or without it being a waterway, or any of those factors? Now that culvert is very high to my back lawn. So there's a there's a there's a grade of my lawn that isn't very much lower, or actually much higher than that culvert. Mm -hmm. So I get the whole idea with the whole stone. Now all of a sudden you're going to slow it down. So when you slow down stone, it's going to start to flow out a little more, and then it could flow right across my lawn. It could start heading right over into my house, and I could solve this problem. It wouldn't even cost the, the town a penny. So I. Peter has a question. Peter. So was the culvert there when you built the pond? The culvert wasn't there when I built my house. And the grade of the house, the grade of the road is a foot and a half lower than it was from the point of me building my house. So that changes things dramatically. I agree with what Steve was saying. Hold on one second. My, qu my question is, was the culvert where it is now when you built your pond there was a 12 inch culvert that crossed there um that i believe they put in whatever that one is used they just pulled out whatever that one size they just pulled out of there dirt deck pulled out there was that culvert there and the culvert the x the, the culvert pond's been there for probably a good 12 years 15 years and it isn't a situation with the pond. We're eroding my property. You're taking feet of my property, every rainstorm. Gone. Hold on, hold on, hold on, please. So you built the pond. There was already a culvert there. It hasn't been a problem historically, but now it is a problem? Yes. And why is that? Well, it sounds like it's also historically, if you said you've been talking about this for 15 years. It's been, it's been, I've been on the phone with the town probably I, almost every year since I've, I've built the house for water issues, which, which create problems because I'm on a downhill side. When did and, you build the house? Like, uh, 99. Okay. So like 25 years 25 ago. 25 years ago. Yeah. Okay. And so the pond is great. It isn't that. It, 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 you can't put a, you can't bring silt in, into a waterway. It's an environmental violation. This stone, I, I, sorry, I you, go ask your question. I just want to know if there's another solution that we can come up with. I mean, other than if if we don't want to do Richard's solution of that of the neighbor having a culvert, then are there other solutions that we can come up with to fix this problem? I just have a question. With your solution of the neighbor having a culvert, are you also asking us to remove that culvert? The uh, long one. Plug it, remove it, but it, it won't it'll be obsolete then. You won't need it. But if it's if it's there still, some water might go through or it might not because you're you're thinking this culvert in your driveway, your front your neighbor's driveway is going to force the water to just keep going down, but you're saying that's too much for the ditch. You don't want that ditch getting water for so long without it going crossover. Is that right? The ideal wow. thing would be to put another cross culvert, mm -hmm. but it would go right onto his property by his house. No, yeah, we can't do that. So we can't do that. I mean, we wouldn't want to do that. The longer the ditch, the more volume you're going to have and gotcha. the more speed yep. you're going to have. Yeah, uh, and yeah. The I more speed that heads down my property and keeps forever eroding my property, which, which was not a waterway prior to the town putting a culvert. But the culvert has been there for a long time. That's what I don't understand. It's been so there for a long time. It's been a tallish culvert right here, about this big. Yeah. You know, a very, very tiny little thing. And 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 now we've got a project up above. And yes, there's a lot of water coming down through here. We're getting a lot of uh, rain. We're getting a lot more. Yeah. But all of a sudden now, all of a sudden, this is becoming okay. an enormous problem. All right. So I'm going to take something. So we're not going to be able to solve this tonight. I personally would like to come and see this because I'm having a very hard time visualizing it. Yes, I would like that, Sarah. Maybe after, maybe after the meeting, we just sure. trip by. Sure. Um, because I am having trouble visualizing it. Um, but 
Um, to your point, you did ask the question, Richard, um, is it the town's responsibility? And I think you referenced our road. Um, I did, your road book. Our road book, yeah, right. You're, you're, and, you're, um, you're. and what I think our next, first of all, I do want to get a better sense, and I would like to talk again with these guys about, once I understand it, getting a better sense of, of what this is. Because there are certain, the, the state has recommendations for how many, how many feet per cross culvert, yes. was it 160 or 160 something? 160 feet, or at least two cross culverts or turnouts per segment of road. And a segment of road is 358 right. feet. And then you'd have to do a water study to see how much water from uh, those apply. Right, so the recommendation from the state is that you would have these cross culverts because you don't want, you want the water to be do, doing, going in, in on two sides of the road so that you're not washing out your road on one thing. I think I understand all this, but I do want to visualize it. Next, I think your question, Mr. Cowles, is who's responsible for this, right? Is the town or, um, and so are we, um, are we to, um, to uh, have to get permission for every landowner where water goes out of a culvert? That can't, I mean, I can't imagine that, but maybe. And so I think we would need to talk with our town lawyer and talk with some folks of the state about how they might solve a problem like this, because you can't be the first person who has complained about this. Um, so I don't think we have any um, solution tonight, but I think we should bring it up at our next, maybe not next meeting, because we might not get enough information by the next meeting, because the next meeting is already next week, isn't it, Sarah? Yes. We can put it on the agenda and see what we can yeah, well, You guys can, you can also just move your next meeting to the 23rd because you might have to consider a VIA uh, contractors uh, uh, contract. Okay. So if you want, it, de it depends if you hold two more meetings or one meeting plus one quick special meeting for the VIA. Okay. 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 So, yes. So, Mr. Cass. So, taking consideration out of water for the next few days and then yeah. going to go on, um, this is not, this is old. So I went up there today and it, it mud, oh, head came yeah. up. And it's above on the other, the, the other uh, call too as well, which is failed to the catch basin. Mm -hmm. But whatever, that, that's fine. They got, they got a good one and they can keep the water going there and that's, that's okay. Um, if they remove the culvert, there's going to be a significant amount of stone left in the road, which now the, the road is draining through stone, okay? Meaning three quarter inch stone, which you pack around a, a culvert. So, which when you come up and you'll see. Now, if we just leave, we remove the culvert, we get rid of a flow of water, but we're still going to be draining off the hillside through this stone that will allow it to go onto my property, but won't allow it to come out as a stream, as a, as a river kind of thing, okay? It'll still just you get remove water. So I gotta believe that, like I say, we'll put a culvert in days. <laughs> it's never failed all the way down the hill before. Yes. I'd like to just mention one more thing that we we talked about. We talked about it with Richard on uh, on his property. As I mentioned, that that because of that last rain, uh, a lot of the water from the road had gone down there, and I think that was part of the problem because you got to get rid of the water on the downhill side. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. the water goes downhill, so. And you need a cross culvert. We we don't want to put up the next place for a cross culvert would be right by his front lawn, which is we can't do that. Go right in his driveway down by the house. Mm -hmm. Well, from that point where that new culvert is, down past his house and past the next building, all the water goes to the ditch side. Normally, there's a crown in the road, and you let the water go to the depth you know, to each side. We're not right there because of his house being there, but he has also built a berm below his driveway to keep the water going to the other side of the road. 
And so there's a long ways down through there that the water can't exit the low side. Because of the berm. Yes, Mr. Kels. So the berm was developed because the ditch vanished after a foot and a half of road material has been eroded off the road, which now is a foot and a half lower. The road is a foot and a half lower than it was the day I built my house. And also, too, the, that berm, there was, there was a ditch and there was a berm up on the side to try to keep the water directing away. Mm -hmm. The one day we had a storm, they were trying to collect more gravel with the grader. They came through, they took that berm out, and the next day we got a rain, it took the whole foundation out of my lower building. My grandfather, my uncle's art studio, went the dirt, the water, everything went right through the building, went right out the back door. And I can show you that too. All right, in the interest of moving forward on our agenda, because we're 15 minutes over time, um, we will resume this at our next select board meeting, provided we can get some information. Um, and um, Zara and I will pop by. What's the address? 350? 350, he's still there. Okay. All right. Thank you. And we will move on to approving the possible temporary demonstration project to slow traffic and improve safety in Middlesex Village. Action Likely Planning Commission Chair Sandy Levine to also update board on PC's activity. Hi, Sandy. Hi. Welcome. Can I just come up here? Yes, so come I'm on closer up. To the yep, come on up. Right up here. Hello, and I think is Ruben still? Ruben yep. McMartin is still there. If you want yes. to take a seat, you can. Oh, thank you. Um, Ruben McMartin is the transportation planner with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, and he is somebody I've been working with on this. So he's an expert on transportation planning. Um, but basically what we're looking for is the Planning Commission um, is looking for approval support from the select board to build a temporary demonstration project in through the village. This basically builds on the walkable Middlesex um, study that we did a number of years to looking at how we can maybe have sidewalks, a narrower road, some bump outs to slow traffic, improve safety for people who walk and bicycle in through Middlesex Village. Um, that longer, bigger build out is still a few, few years off. Um, and what this would be is sort of a, a smaller project, a temporary project. Um, the state transportation agency allows for these smaller demonstration projects. They are put in place for a three weeks time. Hmm. It gives you a chance to sort of see, well, what would it be like if we kind of used temporary barrels, posts, um, painted a sign, painted a crosswalk on the road? What would that look like? How would that help the flow of traffic in a way that could improve safety, slow traffic down? And the Regional Planning Commission has really stepped up on this. They helped um, figure out a plan for it. Um, which I shared with every everyone. Um, and it could only be in place for three weeks. That's all that VTrans would allow. And it would be using plastic posts that are glued mm -hmm. down to the pavement that's there already. Um, and paint on the crosswalks. Basically, anything has to be able to be removed in, in three weeks' time. Wow. Um, the Central Mount Regional Planning Commission will be providing all of the materials that we need to do this. They're hoping they're going to use this as sort of an example of how towns can do this. The town would be responsible for the actual construction, the pasting it down. The folks at Camp Mead volunteered to help us. Um, this is a small project for them, if you ever see what they're doing over there. Um, which I think would be great, but clearly the town needs to take responsibility for this. It's not, you know, I, I would be scared to just let the camp meet folks, fine, just go to town, right. you know, put this in the, in the right of way there. So it would take some, you know, some time. I don't know how long the construction would actually take, um, but it would need to be, you know, with the oversight of, of our um, road foreman. Um, the other process here is we're going to, tomorrow the Planning Commission is meeting with the residents in the village because we want to make sure they're, they understand what this is, get, their, get feedback from them. Um, we want to get feedback from Eric and, you know, about the road. 
I also want to share it with the road committee um, just so they know what's going on and then VTrans needs to approve it and chances are they've got something to say about it because they seem to have something to say about everything. Um, so there's still you know, a few steps to go before this could be final. We're really hoping we can do it this late summer, early fall. Again, it can be in place for three weeks. It'd be great to have it in place when there's an event at Camp Mead so we can really sort of see what is the effect of this. We could, after it's in place or while it's in place, we can get some you know, speed counters out there, see what the effect is. Um, and it's basically, it's, it creates a test case. And Does it allow for parking or is it? Yes. Okay, parking there, and then there's like a walkway or something. Yeah, the like posts okay. would be, I, I, I'm, I'm basing on, on memory, I think they're like 10, 12 feet apart so you can park cars in between them. Gotcha. So it would allow for yeah. parking. Um, so the, yeah, I was going to say the, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how it's how it's set up there. The certainly further uphill toward um, the uh, the exit. <clears throat> the proposal would be to have the spacing um, be comparable to uh, to parallel parking widths, so that you would be able to write because my understanding is that currently um, people are already doing that uh, when there are events at camp meet. And so you'd want to preserve um, that access for that, for, for the event purposes. And it's scary walking down without anything. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't let them park there uh, in that uh, shoulder. They can't park into the travel way. They can't park in the travel way. They park, there's a very wide, wide shoulder, shoulder and they yeah. park in the shoulder. And this would just be, you know, and you also notice if you've been, if you've been through there when there's an event going on and all those cars are parked there, cars go slowly. slowly. Oh, yeah. So, they you know, have to. They have, they have, to. have to. And this would sort of mimic that and allow for cars to go slowly more times. Is it a cost to us? Uh, well, it would be the cost of town. And I know Eric has nothing to do now. Right? <laughs> It, you know, yeah. I, it, it would be, yeah. you know, there, there wouldn't be out-of-pocket costs. Eric would need to hopefully have some say, have some supervision of this. As I said, the Camp Mead folks said they would step up and, you know, help do the, you know, do like the construction work itself. I don't know. It, you know, it seems to me they're just gluing posts down. How long can that take? Um, I don't know. Ruben may have more experience with this. Um, Ruben, did I did I kill this too much, or did I represent this fairly accurately? No, that's more that's more or less what it is. Um, so the pads, the adhesive pads are uh, um, it's a thermoplastic, and um, the I've I've have had a conversation, or I have an open conversation with VTrans right now about what the what their specification for um securing the flexible delineators would be so it may be it may be thermoplastic pad uh it may be um some kind of anchor like um like a bolt uh but they're going to they they will they will specify the technology they want used for securing the posts um but yeah, I mean, other than other than that minor question mark, uh, yeah, I mean that's that's essentially what it comes down to. Um, the town uh, will, yeah, it has has responsibility for the installation and removal, um, including the uh, any traffic management required during that, right? So that would be um, a conversation, obviously, with the uh, the road crew uh, to work out the the schedule and planning for uh, that element. Um, but yeah, is this? Um if someone were to say get killed, for example, <laughs> walking and getting hurt through this, is that a town liability, or is this because this is Route Two? This is a no. Liability? So that's that would be that's tough because it's state route. Um, the there is 
liability that attaches to the two towns if they choose to pursue um, demonstration projects. I don't know the fine language on that. I just know that there is there is a liability element for towns. And is that something that we would want to talk to our insurance company about if we were doing a demonstration project? Mm -hmm. I think it would be. Sarah, do you have thoughts on that? Uh, no, but what about our insurance, our good guy who used to run the insurance company? Doesn't he, people, does Peter have to say? <laughs> Peter, did you hear our question? Well, yeah, I, I think we ought to tell him what we're doing and ask him if it's an issue. I wouldn't think it'd be an issue, but better to find out beforehand than after we do it. Yes. I, I think that it's a good idea to try this. It really is. I don't think Eric and the road crew have the time nor the expertise to do that. He's shaking his head. I That's think that most people, I worked for the transportation agency for a long time. Most of this stuff is done, but it's usually done on hot pavement because that's mm -hmm. what makes it stick. But it can be done. But I think you should come up with some money and hire somebody like NICOM or L&D Safety Markings mm -hmm. or uh, the outfit in Massachusetts to have them come up and do it for you. Someone that has the ability to do traffic control as well. Right. Well, that was we, my question. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was going to be my next thing. We do not have tra we do not yeah. have train traffic people. We don't have signage. The only people I was thinking was maybe our fire department. <laughs> well, well, because they, they have, have signs more and they do volunteering yeah. lately. But it's going to cost a little money. But I mean, yeah. heck. I, I'm wondering. If, <clears throat> I I hesitate to do that, but seems that amount of work for something that is temporary and will be in place for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I guess I would wonder if this can be done by volunteers. Yeah, I would recommend that. You're going to hire a volunteer leader, someone that is experienced I, with For doing traffic that? control. Mm -hmm. well, while Ruben, do you give instructions on where these things go? Yeah. OK. Yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah, no, I mean, the, part of the part of the um, V trans process with this is taking right that's what's there is very much a sketch design it's going to go to V trans their engineers are going to look at it they're going to say yeah this curve radius needs to be this and you need to you know you need to be however many feet on center with these elements and you can't encroach more than x amount on on the cart way right they have they have all of these things that they're going to take and they're going to look at and they're going to hand back and say yeah here are here are your adjustments to make us feel like this is something that we want in our right of way uh so we'll have we'll then have a finalized much more detailed plan um at that point and uh i think the in terms of the the installation effort, you know, it is it is down to um, right measuring measuring marking and having some kind of some kind of control element during that installation process, right? I mean, you just you can't have uh, people you know hammering hammering posts in or adhering them or whatever it's going to be right with you know 60 mile an hour traffic coming coming off of the interstate three feet away right it's it's just that's not uh, yep. not viable that to me does sound more like a professional company and not <laughs> doing that well you can't have volunteers traffic. to do your traffic control unless right. they're certified yeah the only the only that's person violation the right only here. person certified on our department to do traffic control is myself Oh, yeah. And that's and you can't do you both. Don't you can't do both. Three weeks? <laughs> yes, Steve. Well, I agree with Vic. I think that, that once they get a step back from VTrans, exactly what they want to do, I think they should give it to you know Nikon, uh, L and D, one of those companies. They have their own traffic control. Have them give you a price because it's not just the installation; they got to take it down too. No, I think that the volunteers would do the installation, but they would do traffic control. 
unless Say that's that again, please. The volunteers would do the installation. That's what she's yeah. saying. Well, is that what yeah. normally happens, Ruben, in these communities? I mean, it. Yeah, it varies. It's it's kind of up to the community to find to find the effort to do it, and volunteer is an option, right? I mean, it's not none of the. Um, none of the application is is right it's all it's all temporary materials it's not um right you're not laying down thermoplastic striping that's going to be there for five years but then there's also the picking it up the sure but you've got to measure it out it needs to go exactly yeah. how it, needs it needs to be done. laid out prior to all right so itself. but for tonight's purpose do we have to vote on this sandy that we approve of this I, moving forward or I, I think to move forward this and continue to talk to the transit needs the support of the, of the town through the select board. Um, you know, if, Should we say that we approve it contingent upon what? Cost. Cost and manpower. Installation. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Uh, I, I would make a motion that we continue to walk down this path and learn more information should we shoot for maybe next summer if they want to do it on hot so sidewalks since this summer is rapidly <laughs> going away you want to do it this like, summer right do i want to but yeah. you know the world doesn't always work the way come i want together, to come together in time i mean yeah. if we can figure out the pricing and all of that i just i see it as um mid-june beginning of july thing next year like it could be something that we could have for our pre-fourth of july or don't we have a town they have concerts all the time and stuff like yes they have fridays and sundays but don't we have a like a town uh, no. something With coming energy up? No. Really no no but there's not a so sandy i of... if you could i think it would be helpful at the very least for to to explore the cost of um of insult like of getting someone to at least supervise this right get the cost for and pulling it and yeah for traffic control and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a putting up and tearing down traffic control yes peter so if this is only going to be there for three weeks can it be something that can be done with barrels or cones or something which people can just in 20 minutes lay them out and 20 minutes three weeks later you pick them up and take them out of the road i know somebody might have to look every day and see who hit one of the barrels or hit one of the cones or something but it sounds like we're creating a semi-permanent thing and then we're tearing it out three weeks later that sounds expensive to me the concern i don't, I don't know i mean but the concern with uh cones um, maybe less so barrels. Um, but the concern with cones is going to be that if somebody hits one of them at 40 miles an hour and it turns into a projectile, that's things that can turn into projectiles make V trans very uncomfortable. Well, they certainly don't hesitate to use them all over the state everywhere. <laughs> so thousands of them. Anyway, it's just, it's just a thought. But the point is also to make it look like we would want it to look in a permanent way, which is not a bunch of barrels and cones. No, it, it basically is a bunch of barrels and cones. Oh, is it? Because that's yeah. all that VTRAN will allow you to use. Oh, okay. They have to be plastic. When we first, just by background, when I talked with the folks at Camp Mead a couple years ago, they were ready to build things out of wood mm -hmm. and, you know, sort of creative artwork. And, like, VTRAN was like, it. oh, my God, wood. no, they can't do that in the, in the right-of-way. You can use plastic posts, those orange plastic posts, you've probably seen them yes. elsewhere, and, they, and they those orange plastic and barrels, and, but they need to be affixed. You know, I was thinking it's not much different than a command strip underneath it, so, it's, so it stays there on a temporary basis, and you can pull it up easily. It's not a permanent fixture. So I'll look into sort of figure out a little better what, you know, the But you agree that we can't just have people putting it out there. There's they can't just be put out there without being affixed that's not yeah and they can't be out there doing it without someone slowing traffic down and oh i'm yeah, saying absolutely absolutely I, yeah i am i am 100 percent against using volunteers for traffic control and i think our insurance company would go berserk if we told them we were proposing to do that maybe not but i think they would 
If, yes. this, if this goes through, you know, if we go through and go, geez, everybody likes it, what happened? What does the state say when it comes to wintertime? Are they going to plow that? Or well, they, you know, then you, you, you pull it. I mean, well, this it, is. It's a three week. It's three weeks. This is three weeks. That's not my question. That's not his question. That's not my question. My question is. Victor's, Victor's question is if we actually. Why don't you let me Okay, we like it and they install something permanent, then it's there forever, right? All right. Yeah. Right, but I think that this is, if I correct me if I'm wrong, Sandy, but this is a part of the process of our argument that sidewalks are going to be a great thing. And when we go to find funding for sidewalks, we can say we did this demonstration project and we found that it was really successful and that people really liked it and they wanted more. They wanted real sidewalks. Liz, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm in favor of doing this. I just wanted to do it in a cost-effective, safe way. That's all. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I think right now the board is likes the idea. We're not ready to sign any paperwork saying move forward, but we would like a little bit more information from you, Sandy. And if you can get that and come back to us at a future meeting, that would be great. Great. Thank you. Is it, oh, and then you're going to update us on other activity. Yeah, just uh, thought I'd use this as an opportunity to update you on what the Planning Commission has been up to. Um, I shared with you the little spreadsheet that we have that just sort of keeps track of projects we've been working on. You know, new matters, we've, had, we've got two new Planning Commission members. They're very yes. enthusiastic. They hit the ground running, and I think they'll be great additions to the Planning Commission. Um, and and we also sort of bigger projects that we're working on one LO Casey is kind of taking a look at um, housing in Middlesex what can we do to bet to better foster having more housing um, more you know closer to affordable housing in Middlesex what can we do to help families figure out how they can add an accessory unit to their building that they already have and we're working to have a workshop we um, workshop together sometime in the fall to nice. look at those issues. You know, it's, it includes looking at septic, water, permitting, all those pieces. One thing. Another um, project we're working on is, you know, walking paths and improving the safety in and around Rumney School. Um, there have been a number of complaints about cars going really fast there. There's more and more traffic with the school kids there. Um, a number of neighbors showed up to a meeting that we held and said, yeah, we're, you know, we're excited about this and willing to work on it. Um, one of our new members, Paulo Tenti, has really just, you know, taken this project on and is working with some of the neighborhood neighbor volunteers to figure out what we might want to do with that. What are some next steps for a project over, you know, a year or two? It might be reconfiguring some of the parking and how um, traffic flow happens at Rumney and that we obviously need to do work with Rumney School. Um, a couple of other volunteers are very interested in looking at creating a path and they've talked to some of the neighbors that would be sort of in the backyards behind like Sarah Merriman's house and on that side of the road that you know kids could walk on that side of the road before they cross the road and I think they're working with the trails committee to figure that piece out. Um, and a third piece is sort of slowing traffic down through there, you know, things like, you know, speed bumps. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. The traffic goes too fast for that to happen. Um, I, mean, I think if Paul has been looking at this more closely than, than, than I know, but it may be, we'll, and again, this is still a ways out, we might be looking to acquiring some more of those flashing signs that tell you how fast you're going as you're going around those corners from both ends. And, taking a look at where the, it is a school zone, but the signs that we have there for the school zone are not really in the best of places to really let people know that you need to slow down. So we might be coming to the select board with some suggestions for how to, to do that. Um, but that's probably a ways off. That's after summer sometime. Um, and uh, other projects, the demonstration project we just shared with you and We'll be looking to, um, you know, do we want to have a, to apply for a municipal grant, a municipal planning grant. Um, Bless you. Those are, <laughs> those, that, those usually, the applications are due sometime in the fall and the funding is in, in January. Um, you know, I don't know what 
it could be I some, think some road some work. Now I'm trying to remember what it was. Road planning work might be a part of that, or it could be just continuing on some of the projects that the planning commission is working on. Um, we also had, you know, a little bit of an education uh, table that we set up at the energy fair about bears and composting and garbage, which I think the bears attended that session because ever since we did that session, they all came out and said, oh, Middlesex is the place to go for bears. Um, you know, that continues to be a problem. Um, and we, you know, I, I, I don't have the answer to that. We've got a great game warden who had some good information on bears. I put, I provided some of that information. Um, it's down at, at the town clerk's office downstairs. Um, and that's, you know, the sort of high level projects we're working on. If you've got questions, thoughts, suggestions, that's great. Know. Thank you for your yeah. service to the town, Sandy. Yeah. She does Bravo. so much. She's like so full-time town employee who doesn't get paid mm -hmm. to do I all the grants and the... Mm -hmm. I enjoy doing it. That's great. Thank you. Thanks Thank for your support. Um, all righty. Now, so it's 6.30 now, guys, and um, we could pass over the personnel policy. We could work on it for 15 Pardon? minutes, maybe. Look at a section of it. What is the pleasure of the three of us, four of us, with um, Peter here? Yeah, for, for, for me, I, Liz, I, Liz? Yeah? Unfortunately, I have to leave in a couple of minutes. Okay, so let's pass uh, over. Okay, go ahead. No, well, Randy isn't here either, so thank you, Eric, for coming. Randy isn't here either, so let's just put it on pause. Okay. Liz, didn't yeah. you guys originally say you were going to devote a meeting to this? We as did. As opposed to doing yeah, 10 minutes I at know. a time? Yeah, we did. And I thought we had tried that last. Uh, Too many interruptions. There's a lot of interruptions. Um, I mean, yes, 10 minutes, did. it's hard. You just get started mm -hmm. and. Yeah. Did should. you have any questions? Oh, okay. sorry. No. Uh, no, other than that, I was going to uh, ask Vermont League of City and Town if they had a personnel policy that we oh. could go off of, and I just haven't done that. Yeah, I think there's something on their website. Okay. I if think you go there, I think I've seen something there before. But. Um, we, uh, yeah, we've brought that personnel policy. Yeah. In fact, it's, it's, our personnel policy is kind of modeled on their VLCT yeah. okay. Okay. policy. Um, Sarah, you know what would be helpful yeah. when we're doing this, if it's easy, is um, when, when we do have this continued work on town personnel policy, if we could write down in the minutes where we're starting up again. Because it seems like we get okay. a different personnel thing every time, and I'm like, where were we? Section 29 over time. Right. That's where, how do you know? You have it written That's down? Yeah. That's good. Ah, <laughs> nice. OK, section 29 over time. OK. Um, OK, so we'll pass over that. So the other business, BIA update, town hall. Considering a special meeting on July 23rd to choose a contractor manager, action possible. I'm sorry, I meant construction manager. I was still in the th throes of COVID. My yeah. Brain. yeah, okay, so we're moving quickly on VAA, and please, Sarah, help me out here because I didn't, I didn't bring my notes with me about VAA, but we met with them um, the other day um, to go over, yeah. what? Nothing, go ahead. Do you want me to just fill in where they are in the construction manager? Well, let me first just tell me where we are in the VIA piece of it, and then the construction manager. Yes, you can chime in about that. So we um, took the, um, the Sandy pulled together um, feedback from the uh, Historical Society and the Energy Committee, and um, we didn't get anything back from the community fund um, for feedback about the food shelf. Um, but she compiled that information in a nice sort of one page of recommendations and feedback for BIA's um, original plan. Um, because as we move into the design phase, this is the time when they take any feedback or changes and implement them in this design phase. So that is in the hands now of BIA. They are working on this design phase um, currently. And as a part of that, in order for them to be successful with the design phase, they do need a construction coordinator to help review this design phase. Is that correct, Sandy? Something, it's, it's around, it, there, there's some time sensitivity here. So we have put out, you can finish Sarah, we put out an RFP for construction managers, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry. 
So the, um, I'll try to get them. So we, VIA independently reached, reached out to contractors they knew. Um, and we had construction managers come in on the 27th, I think it was, of June and do a walk through the town, town hall to see, you know, various, you know, what the issues were. And actually, I think we had a pretty good turnout. We also put out, I also put out RFPs on Vermont Business Registry and the VLCT website and our own website. So, we, you know, we've gotten, I think we've gotten at least two or three people who are talking to BIA. So the question for the board is, depending on on how many how many proposals BIA receives, the board's going to have to make a decision by the twenty third. Uh, you know, if there's if there's if it's if there's only one con construction manager who comes forward, then it's easy to uh, to decide who who should who should who should have this job based on BIA's recommendation. Because ultimately, what the board needs to keep in mind is that we have to get a number. This is the magic number that's going to go on the ballot in November, and that's going to actually be decided by the board in August before we go through the whole uh, public notification process for a bond. So that's what we're looking, that's what we have to keep in mind. Yeah. Monday the 15th, we have a meeting like during the day to review yeah. the RFPs that have come in because there was a deadline, I think of Friday, maybe um, this, this, this coming Friday for the RFPs to come in. So yeah. Sandy, Dave, if he's here, I think Dave will be here. I, Sarah, will be reviewing these RFPs, you know, with VIA. And, um, and then we will, um, that's why on the 23rd, we need, oh, on the 22nd, <laughs> we have a design meeting number two, a VA design meeting number two, we, we met with them a couple weeks ago, and that's the CM finalist discussion in person. So that's why on the 23rd, we're gonna vote to say that we recommend this construction manager which was included right. in that. So just to be clear, this is that extra ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 that we included in our overall ask of the town at town meeting for sort of phase one, the initial phase of a construction manager. The, so this construction manager would be the same person that then continued if a bond passes and then we go through with, with building. But you have to hire that, construct. you have to plan on that construction manager in the design phase in order to get a good cost for the... Right. You know, the construction manager should help you come to a number that you're going to use. The construction manager is aware that this project may not ever come to fruition. Okay? They're aware of that when they do this kind of thing. So does that make sense to everybody? On the 23rd, we're going to have a special meeting so that's when Sarah said earlier, well, we could skip next week's meeting and just make the 23rd our meeting and include that on the agenda. Right? Whatever you guys want. What do you guys think about that? I think that makes sense. Do we want to do the polls in manual on the 16th? Oh, God, sorry. <laughs> I, know, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, we do the policy manual on the 16th. That sounds like a really some fun summer thing to do. Does it make a big, may, may recommendation about the personnel policy? Yes. Why doesn't each select board member take extensive notes, write notes on each policy, submit them, all compile them, distribute them, and that way you guys can think about it so you don't go back and forth or else you have other questions you want me to follow up on? We can do that. That, that way, I mean, this shouldn't be this hard. We should not be sweating over this for two years. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, remember we had the flood last year. <laughs> but it's not like we're sweating. No, it's just a personnel policy. So the problem with that is I don't think I'm going to be able to find time outside of this meeting to review a personnel policy. Now, on the, on the other hand, there may be pe we want to, maybe we want to have a subcommittee of people who do want to do that. Yes, Peter. I think the process when we can successfully set out a block of time and say, we're gonna work on this for an hour, we march right along through it. But it's meetings like tonight where the meeting runs long, everybody's tired. The last thing you wanna do is, is uh, work on the personnel policy. I think we need to set up 
I don't know, two or three, two or three more meetings, make it the first item on the agenda and say, we're going to devote 45 minutes or an hour, but a real block of a real block of time to it and just do it. I agree. I mean, we shouldn't be spending unbelievable time, but to me, I think it's more confusing than helpful to, uh, have us all read through it and submit notes, and then you have to record the notes, and we send them out, and then we we end up talking about them all anyway. I'd rather just I'd rather just sit there and go through it. Cheryl has a question. You guys only have like what two, three sticking points? Yeah, most of the personal policy. So why don't you guys hit those per, those sticking points? And it seems like everything else is pretty. Agreeable. I don't know what those are. So you know, I think the it's over time. Yeah. The, yeah. I think it's a good idea to go through the whole thing just because you never know. Like you like you said, there's some things like, you know, the gender, right? That stuff like that needs to be updated. Those things are things that that um, that most people have updated by now. So um, so making sure that didn't you have a friend who was willing to look at it after we were done? So uh, well, we do have somebody in HR at the AOT who works for the road committee, and she is willing to. Okay. Absolutely yeah. get that. Okay, so I think you're right, Peter, that we should just devote some time. So now the question is, do we want to um, devote, so do we want to have two meetings, one next week, one on the 16th, where all we do is policy, is this, it, Vic says no. Um, or do we want to keep our meeting on the 16th? So these are our options. Keep our meeting on the 16th and, um, and devote the first hour to personnel policy and do that for like three meetings and just have a special meeting on the 23rd that we can just zoom into. Because all we're doing on the 23rd is approving the construction manager. I'm fine either way. Although I would say it's more efficient to have one meeting, but. Okay, so let's make the meeting the 23rd. Let's devote an hour to reviewing our personnel policy and also have on the agenda that we are going to approve the construction manager. And by then we'll have a little bit more information for Richard Cowell's mm -hmm. road situation. Are we calling him back? Or are we? Uh, we're going to talk about it again. I'm yeah. sure he's going to come. We had we had no resolution tonight. Yeah. So. Um, so just to re recap, you're not you're not going to meet on the 16th. You're going to meet on the 23rd. The first hour is going to be personnel policy, and then you're. You know, it may be just a matter of restructuring these select board meetings to be more like Montpelier, where you guys do your business, you have your business, and then at the end of the day, at the end of the meeting, you have a public comment so that you, we don't spend all this time going back. And forth. That's probably not a bad, that, that, that's probably a good idea. So let's do that, Sarah, and I'm sure some other things will come on the agenda, and they'll either have to be put off until the pre next meeting, or... So no 16th, just the 23rd. I, that's what I vote for. Yeah, sure, that works okay. for me, but yeah. I have just a question. Um, we cannot zoom in and do a policy, like a meeting, just zooming in from our homes for an hour. One of us has time? to be here. Oh, okay. Somebody mm -hmm. has to be in the town hall and available, but, and it's just better when everyone's here, but yes, if you can't be here because of you're sick or you have, you know, you're- COVID. You've got COVID, right? You can be zooming in, or you live in another place. I just meant specifically to go over the policies. Oh, to go over the policies. Yeah. Then. Oh, well, like then it's a meeting. It it's a warned meeting. meeting, and someone would still have to be here. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So okay. hopefully Randy's okay with that, too. He's on vacation this week, right? He's on vacation yeah. this week. And okay. Um, I make a motion that our meeting is on the 23rd and not on the 16th. Okay, is there a second? I don't know that we have to move this, um, but. Second. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, Peter seconds, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Alrighty. Guys, I gotta go. Sorry. All right, see ya. Um, oh, Sarah, you said there was one more thing that came to a matter before the board. Yeah, and before you do mine, just just to keep everything kosher, could you just uh, I just create a just create a, either a motion or a line. We'll deal with it later. Of uh, what what percentage? What's the interest rate on the excavator? And that you signed the loan documents. Oh, that's right, uh, Cheryl. The paperwork. You guys got the paperwork. In the blue. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, in the blue, and it's got the little labels on it. 
Okay, so this is $182,000. $182,000. With an interest rate of 5.97 per Five point nine seven. So we don't have to make a motion of that because we already did, right? Okay. Five, yeah, five point nine seven. I just looked through the minutes and I don't see that you guys, you guys actually ever chose an interest rate. You've already gone through the voters and everything. You're you're pretty clear. This is within your power. Just, just in case, we're just making the bank happy here. So it's a hundred, eight hundred eighty two thousand five point nine seven interest rate for how long? Uh, so I think we chose the uh, highest. One. We took the lowest. The longest. Like 10 or something? I think seven. 10. 10. 10 installments of $18,200 each plus interest on the annual balance calculated at the above rate. So $182,000, interest for 10 years. Yep. Yeah. And you guys signed that. We right. haven't signed it yet, but we're going to. Some of us did. Right. Some of us did. <laughs> OK. Um, you wanted right. to know what the other, the other issue was. The other issue is that we've received complaints about a legal trail. It's legal tail three off of lower Sunnybrook road. It is blocked. The, whoever is living there, um, the owner lives out of town. So I don't know who, if they're renting, I don't know who owns that, but maybe when your guys are driving around to go to East Hill, to go check out that culvert, maybe swing by lower Sunnybrook, go by 105 lower Sunnybrook road and see if that legal trail is blocked. And if so, huh? And and it's somebody put it there, and it's not supposed to be there. You're not supposed to block legal trails. I think legal trail crosses oh private God. property. They don't. I think they just don't want people crossing the private property via the legal trail. Okay, so this has been a trail like it's a it's a Middlesex trail. It's on our AOT map as a legal as legal trail three, and it connects with Lower Sunnybrook Road. And apparently, who is ever there, somebody is blocking that access to the road. And so I received anonymous complaints about that. The one that comes from Davy Road, or do you know? I don't know. I, you know, there aren't that many legal trails, but they're confusing. Okay, so 105 Lower Sunnybrook Road. Yeah. Lower, not upper? 105. Lower Sunnybrook Road? Oh, maybe Lower it's Upper Sunnybrook Road. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, Is sorry. Where's Sunnybrook off? What's that? What is Upper Sunnybrook off? 12? Oh, no, Upper Sunnybrook is off East Hill. Yeah. Davy Road, East Hill, Davey. Johnny P. Carr, yeah. right on that sharp corner. Right I, thought this was, I thought this was Lower Sunnybrook. I looked at the map. I can go. No, I, yeah, I, think, so it, I think it is Lower Sunnybrook, but I think it, I think it's the trail that com that is the actual continuation of Sunnybrook. Yes. Road. Oh, oh that it goes from yes. Lower Sunnybrook. Yes. Right. Right. It's, exactly it's a very right. small yeah. section that goes, <laughs> that's a trail. So where do you suggest we drive to? I, to Sunnybrook. wherever the address is, the, the, the end of Lower Sunnybrook Road. Okay, 105 to... Lower Sunnybrook Road. Oh. You could do it. Yeah, yeah, so that from there, too. Let's drop me off at my house, which is on Shady Rail, and then we'll go East Hill, and we'll do the su Sunnybrook in your car, in your car or my car, whatever. But let's drop one car off on Shady um, Rail it's and only backtrack. 1.5 acre lot. <laughs> trying to yeah. see who owns it. We wouldn't, we wouldn't um, go from here and then. You can't get there from here. You can't get there from here. No, no, and then we'd have to come all the way back down before we go right, home. Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> you guys don't have to do it tonight. You just, just. Well, we're planning on doing it. We're road tripping. Road tripping. Road tripping. Not on the weeds. Okay, so, um, but I think we do need to know if it's upper sunny or lower sunny. I think it's, it's, it's lower sunny. It's lower sunny. Lower. Okay, it's just on the GPS. Lower sunny. Okay. It's Andy's right. It connects. It's, a, it's an old little trail. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah, there was something else. Oh, I just wanted to, other matters that come before the board, the RFP for the website, has that actually gone out? I don't think so, because uh, last I knew we were, they were, it was still being tweaked. Maybe in my COVID haze, I didn't pay attention to it. I'm sorry, I'm, okay. I'm a little out of it. That, that, that's all right, but I just wanted to make sure that that was just maybe. Um, it's ready. Oh, it's ready. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Okay. Maybe have Lori resend it. We'll just, okay. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We don't need the select board approval, do we? Right. I don't think we have anything. Are there any other matters that come before the board? Did everyone sign? Did hear some things to sign? Um, this is the minutes from um, last time. Don't forget to, don't forget to sign the loan documents. Those are yeah, key. loan documents. And is there any other matters that come before the board? Alrighty, then we're joining this at seven six fifty.